Uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. If you get there. Hey, go put that back on there. What was that? What was that before? What was that on there? Ah, he doesn't call the equipped. He equips the call. I like that. Cool. Amen. All right. Well, praise the Lord. How many enjoyed, Brother Oleg? Amen. I enjoy that. I enjoy that. Amen. Uh, Oleg Rooney. Oleg Rooney. He is high energy, I'm telling you. But uh, he, uh, you know, he, he just made me think. I've got a long way to go. We've got a long way to go. Amen? We got a long, we're, we've got a long way. We've got a long way to go. And uh, I, was just, I was just thinking the other day. David, how long do you work for AT&T? Southwestern Bell? 34 years. 34 long-suffering years. 34 years. Man, that's a long time. And I asked, I asked Brother Dean how long he worked for Enviro. He's worked there for nine years. That doesn't seem possible. Because I've worked for Central Plastics for... Whew. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Central Plastics for 27 and then Enviro for nine. That's great, man. That's a long time. I worked for regular for 10. That was a long time. And, uh, you know, I think everybody... If you live in Seminole, you have to put either your time in the oil field or a regular. That's just, that's your, you have to. And so, and, <laughs> and so I, I put my time in at Wrangler. I put 10 years in there. I've been selling mission tortillas now for 13. And so uh, I'm just telling you, it's a, it's a long process. To, your life goes, and you know, I, I looked back and I thought, I can't believe I've been selling tortillas for 13 years. When I started off, I thought, man, nobody's going to eat these things. I said, I mean, you know, I didn't have, of course, I still don't have insurance, but we, we didn't have insurance, we didn't have anything like that. We, you're, you're self employed, you're on your own. You do your thing, you know? And uh, if you want insurance, you can pay $500 a month and have insurance. If you, you, know, if you don't, then you don't. Then you have a credit card. <laughs> you know, don't break anything over $10,000, okay? So, uh, you know, <laughs> so, yes, just don't get hurt over $10,000 worth. And so, <laughs> and so we, we just, when you're self-employed, I thought to myself, man, I've, I've, I, I've spent, I've spent my half my life working at two places. You know, I've, I've worked since I was eight, and I, I, I had a paper route. I worked for a similar producer for, I don't know, six years or so. From the time I was eight to the time I was 14 or 15 years old, I, I threw newspapers. Park Street, Highland Street, uh, University of Jefferson, Hoover. <laughs> Roosevelt, Coolidge, all this side of town, man. I had paper routes like crazy. And then I was Mr. IGA. I was, that's right. I was Mr. IGA for about five years. And, and I still and I still work for Matt and Dana. And so uh, that's just one of those things, man. I just I don't really work for work with them. But uh, it's amazing how long your life you spend your life doing things, and you look up and think, man, that's been a long time ago. And when I was working at, at Seminole IGA, that was 1985, 86, 87. That's 25 years ago, 26 years ago, 27 years ago. That's a long time ago. My brother, I saw my brother at, uh, at Tishomingo the other day. I stopped, and, and he, him and Sharon pulled up, and he said, I just have 11 months left. I'll be 60. I said, that's impossible. Well, I, I'll have a brother that's 60. That's just crazy. My parents will be married 60 years in October. Man, I looked up one day and they were old. That's the truth. That's the truth. I mean, they were just kicking around pretty good. And all of a sudden, I looked up one day and they were old. And this, I mean, imagine how, how your time goes. And, how time flies. And, you know, my mother hurt her knee and, and she's never recovered from that. My dad fell in Mississippi. He's never really recovered from that. And, and once, that, that, once that thing happened, they just started ticking away. And they got older. And I was thinking how our lives just go. And what do we give our lives to? And what do we, what do, we do? What do, we tra what do we say, God, I'm going to trade this much of my life? Uh, David has traded 34 years of his life the Southwestern Bell and AT&T and whatever else they were called in the mid-20s. SBC. Brother Dean, is, he's, 
They gave 27 years to central classics and nine. So that's 36 years, if my math is correct, and new math. Uh, 36 years of his life to two companies. That's a lot of, that's a lot. It's a lot. But again, how long did you work for Coke? Two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. He worked for Coke. The whole time I was growing up, he worked for a pop company. Coca-Cola and Coca yeah, <laughs> really, really, I'm sorry. Coca-Cola. <laughs> Have a Coke with a smile. Okay. And so, uh, but I worked there for a long time. And, and the whole time I was growing up, he either worked for Pepsi Coke or somebody. And uh, it's just, he, he traded you know, that much of his life, that much of his life for that. And here I'm going to just share this with you for at least a few minutes tonight. And I, I promise not to bore you too long. And, uh, this is in Galatians 2 and 20. So I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who, lived, who loved me and gave himself for me. Keep going, please. 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is, then Christ is dead in vain. I'm going to read it out of, out of the New Living Translation. It says, it says, uh, if I can find it, uh, verse 20, verse, verse 20, it's just weird. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of, uh, grace of God as meaningless, for if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. I'm going to share with you just for, for a few minutes about what are you giving your life to? What are you giving your life to? Now, I'm not saying, I'm not criticizing us for working. We have to have jobs, and I'm all about work. I, I believe you ought to work. I'm, I'm a work guy. I'm a workaholic. I, I believe that when you're off, you ought to be doing something. You ought to have a project. There ought to be something going on. I believe in working. I think you feel better when you work. Amen. You don't feel good in the morning, get up and stir around a little bit, you'll feel better. Go out and sweat a little bit, you'll feel better. I guarantee you will. I promise you. If you get up and go and get around, I know there's times we need to rest, and I know there's times that we need a vacation, and there's times that we need a break, but I, I just, I feel better when I'm working, I, when I'm accomplishing something. When something is being done, when I'm, when I'm doing something that's profitable, I feel better. I, I, I don't feel good. If I, you know, there's, there's Saturdays that I just don't feel like doing anything. Anybody have those? Okay. You just don't feel like doing anything and you lay around all day and you feel like junk. Or I do. I don't know if anybody else does. But I just feel bad because, not, because I just didn't do anything. I didn't get up and go do it. Listen, you're not called to be sitting at, to, to sit there. Sedentary. Is that, is that the word? Sedentary. Sedentary. I couldn't get it out. <laughs> Whatever. That's close? Sedentary. What she said. Sedentary. Sedentary. Okay. Okay. I'll get it out. Listen. You're, you're, you're not called to be motionless. Okay. You're not called to just sit on a pew. You're not called to just sit in the house. You're not called to just sit by and let the world go by and just, as you just sit there and wave at the, at the parade. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be leading the parade. You're supposed to be in there on the float throwing candy. You're supposed to be involved in life. Get involved. Get involved in the life that God has given you. Don't, don't just sit back and say, well, I'm too old for that. Oh, please. You're not too old for that. Are you sucking in air? Then you're not too old. Are you able to walk and move around? Then you're not too old. Are you able to do what God has called you to do? Yes, you're able to do it. So don't get sick. Don't get like that. Be in motion. Be a, be a person that's doing things. What are you giving your life to? Some of us need to fall out of love with sleep. Amen. You don't need to sleep 10 hours a day. <laughs> Sorry, but I not wake up here. <laughs> Get up! <laughs> Get up! Do something. I'm not that old yet, so maybe I'm willing to take care of I don't need to sleep 10 hours a day, okay? I'm 45. I need to sleep about 6 and I'm good. I get about six, I'm 
good. I, I just want to sleep. You know, I, I got to get up. I got to get busy. I got to do something. If I lay in bed too long, my head hurts. How about anybody else? My back hurts. I got to get up. I walk like Matthew. I got I, I, I just, I got to get up and I got to get busy doing something. So what are you giving your life to? Are you giving your life to a mattress and a pillow? Dear God, I hope not. Are you giving your life to, uh, to a, a television screen and a remote control? People ask all the time, did you see it? No. I don't have time to watch television. There's stuff to do. There's things. I'm not preaching again. I don't, I don't care if you have a devil box in your house. I don't care. Okay? I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Okay? I don't care what you have. I don't care. <laughs> 70 -ish. I don't care. That's great. I'll, I, if I get a chance, I'll watch all you Saturday. If I don't, I'm not going to cry about it. I, I, know I got to watch about, I don't know, about a quarter and a half over the state, Florida State. Great. You know, I, it doesn't matter. You know, this little gadget right here will tell me what the score is. I, I, you know, I don't have to sit and watch all that and waste four and a half hours of my day going. <laughs> really? There's too much other things to do. There's, the, there's life to be lived. There's, there's stuff going on. There's, there's, there's stuff around your, listen, your kids and your grandkids need you to be non, they need to see you moving. Amen. Sedentary. Amen. Is that right? Okay. okay. They need to see you moving and being involved. They need to see everything going on in your life. They don't need to see you sitting there like a lump. They need to see you mowing grass. They need to see you doing stuff. Be involved in life. Go, go for it. Okay, go back to verse 20. I know I'm off subject, but I can't help it. That's just me. Go, verse 20, please. I am crucified with Christ. What does being crucified with Christ mean? It means a man's dead. He died. I'm dead to Christ. I'm dead with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. He said, I died, but I'm living. Hear me. Don't be such a Christian that you're so dead that you're not living. Get out and live. I want this church to be vibrant and alive. I want you not to be sitting around and go, wow, I guess it's Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it's Sunday. But what did you do Thursday, Friday, Saturday? What did you do Wednesday? What did you do Monday, Tuesday? What? I know it's Sunday, but let's go live during the rest of the week. What, what's the old saying? Don't be so earthly minded that you know earth, no, no heavenly minded you know earthly good. Don't be so happy. Don't have your mind so much in heaven and the sweet by and by and someday, someday, and life passes you by and you wake up and you're 20 years older and you haven't done anything in that 20 years. But get old. Yeah. There's a song by Billy Joel called Vienna Waits for You. Anybody know that song? Yeah. Slow down, you crazy child. So man, Jesus for a juvenile. There's a line in that song that says, "You can get what you want, or you can just get old." I love lyrics of songs. I eat up lyrics of songs. I love it. because everybody goes, "Oh, isn't it a great song?" What's it say? I don't know. Well, that was a great song. You love the melody. You don't love the song. The song. You can eat, get what you want, or you can just get old. I choose not to just get old. I choose to grab what God has for me and for what God has for this church. I choose to reach out there and grab it. I choose to reach out and grab what God has for us. Remember the, uh, the, remember the Frozen video I showed and, and she steps on the crystal bridge and it goes? Remember that? Remember? And so I said, let's just see how far God will really take us. If we'll take a step on the bridge of ice. And let's just see how beautiful it is and where God will take us. But you know what? God will take you anywhere if you don't want to go. Oh, somebody help me tonight. Listen. First, first. Uh, okay. But I, uh, yeah, I live. But Christ liveth in me. Who lives in you? Who? Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, Christ. Uh, yeah, I read a message, I love it. Yet not I, but Christ, God's anointed one and his anointing, Christ. 
God's anointed one lives in me. And his anointing lives in me. I, I just, it, it floors me to, 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 for people to think that the only way you can serve God is to get on a platform and sing and preach and all that stuff. Be the best accountant that God has ever had. Be the best truck driver God's ever, ever had. Be the best store owner God's ever had. Be the best one. Because you can, you can live for God to be anointed to be a store owner. Did you know that? You can be anointed to be a truck driver. You can be anointed to be whatever God's called you to be. You can be the best regular employee that regulars ever had. You can be anointed to do that. You can be anointed to work at Central State College. Even Janet can. Amen. She even her. Okay. So, listen, I love you, Janet. Okay, hear me this just a second. God will anoint you and pour his anointing upon you. You can be what God's called you to be. I said it a little bit Sunday morning, and I, I, got, I just kind of cut it short because I kept you too long anyway. And I beat myself up a lot because I just, sometimes I just feel like I make a mess out of stuff and I keep you too long. And I, just, I don't mean to, but I, I just, hear me just a second. I, I touched on it just a little bit. But quit acting like everybody else is better. Stop it. Nobody's better than you. All those people you think are so wise and have so much wisdom and knowledge about the world, they don't know any more than you. America is in a, is in a vat of illiteracy and ignorance when it comes to the Word of God. They don't know... We don't know what this says anymore. We know what somebody on TBN says, someone on the Word Network says, someone on Impact says, we know what somebody here. We know what Perry Stone says, we know what T.D. Jakes says, we know what Rob Parsons says, we know what Benny Hinn says, but we don't know what God said. I'm just saying. Thank you, Sister Paul. It's time for us to dig into this and live it. What does this say about me? Listen, I, I, I'm crucified with Christ. This is Paul writing to the Galatian church. I am crucified, therefore I am dead in Christ. But nevertheless, I live, not I live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I, I don't live this because I'm somebody, but God is somebody. It's time for us to realize that God is somebody. I'm going to use Julia for an example. Julia, you're not paying attention, so I'm going to use you. Okay, here's Julia. No, I'm just kidding. Inside Julia is a life. Amen? We can't hear him, can we? Him, right? We can't hear him, okay. We can't hear him, and then I just want to make sure. He's the spiritual authority of the house. Okay, so I, we can't hear him, but we can't hear his voice yet. But he's still alive. We can't see his face yet, but he's still alive. We can't hear his cry, but he's still alive. Now, I, I saw Janet had her hand under her belly earlier, and he was kicking her. Kicking your hand? No, he's still alive. He wasn't kicking? He was still alive. Oh, that anointing. He was laying on the spear. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's it. And so, <laughs> you touched him, and he just fell out. Okay. And so, um, but hear me. She is alive, and that baby is alive inside of her. <laughs> Same way with you. You, you're, you're alive inside of Christ. It's time to be birthed. It's time for us to see your face. It's time for us to see your hands. It's time for us to hear your voice. It's time for you to live and be what God's called you to be. Church, it's time to live again. Time to be what God's called you to be. It's time to step out of the womb and start being what God's called you to be. Amen? Somebody help me. All right. I, I, I live in... I, I, where, where do I get to? But Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God. I'm not anybody. I'm just Jeff from Highland Street. That's who I am, and that's all right. I, I was good with being Jeff with Highland Street, but God has allowed me to be something different. God has allowed me to pass through this church, and I love it. I don't love all this stuff of the stuff, but I, I love I love being the pastor of the church. I, I love coming up with the ideas that 
that, that, God, that God gives me, and I, I love trying to implement them and just see what they do, and I just love that part of it. I love breaking down the Word of God, and I, I love praying and seeking God's face for messages, and God always gives them to me, and I, I just thank God for that. That's, that stuff's cool to me. But hear me, it's not because of me, it's because of the Christ that lives inside of me. Listen, you can't be saved enough. But God through you has saved you and now your righteousness and your your right standing with God. Help me just a second. Here we go. Uh, verse uh, we're good. Who uh, this faith in the Son of God who loved me? He loved me. Here. Now when I turn to TV, I'll be like parentheses for last year. Okay. Who loved me? Some of y'all don't know God loves you. I'm just going to tell you straight up. I pray. I, listen, I, I know what I know. I don't know what I don't know. But I know what I know. You hear me? When I pray, and it breaks my heart because some of y'all don't think God loves you like he loves other people. And that's a lie of the devil. And he's kept you down. He's kept you bound. He's kept you down longer than, than, than any other lie that the was ever put, 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 uh, what was that word? put on you perpetrated on you is that lie is you're not good enough. Okay, I'm going to get back up here and be good, Sharon. That lie that he's put on you that you're not good enough to be blessed because you're past. You're not good enough to be blessed because of where you came from. You're not good enough to be blessed because of your education level. You're not good enough to be blessed because of your whatever, whatever. That is a lie perpetrated on you by the devil because Paul, who was the chief of sinners, he calls himself, said that I live with now, I say, uh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. Paul, how many of y'all killed a bunch of Christians? Okay, I'm just checking. That's we're going to ask you to leave. But, uh, um, <laughs> how many of y'all rounded up a bunch of Christians and killed them? Women, children. How many stood by and held coats as they stoned the Apostle Stephen to death? None of you, right? None of you. Paul did. And thought he was doing the work of God. So I'm thinking, if Paul, the chief of sinners, can say, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I asked Brother Dean and I asked Brother David, because I know they've worked at the cassette companies for a long time. That's the reason I asked, because I knew that you guys had been there a long time, both of you. Brother Buster, how long have you worked at Wrangler? 19 years, a long time to get to rank. You know, I, I gave 10 of my life. It took me two weeks to blow blue stuff out of my nose. True story. True story. I worked in the cutting and I just you breathe that stuff all day long. It took me two weeks to blow blue junk out of my nose. That's probably not healthy for you. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's just blue dye. Be right. and so, but hear me. You've got to be careful what you give yourself to. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. How long did Jesus live on this planet? He was 33 and a half, so three and a half, 33 and a half years, right? How long was his ministry? Three and a half. Okay. 33 and a half years he lived on this planet to give himself. 34 years, 37 years, 19 years. And I'm not saying you should better. I thank God for you guys that you're that faithful to a job and they've been that good to you that you stayed that long. And you know, people say all the time, how could you work at Wrangler that long? I said, they were good to me. Uh, Wrangler was good to me. I have no, I have no complaints. They, other than blowing blue junk out of But they were good to me. They paid my bills. They, they supported my family. They, I went to work every day, and they paid me every week. It was great. I had a great, great arrangement. It's funny how you go to work every day, and they pay you every week. 
It's amazing how that works. And so I have no qualms with them. Thank God for Rector being in this city for as long as it's been in this city. How many people have they employed? How many people have how many people have uh, retired from there? Like, share your hands. And they, and they still hire 300 people, whatever it is over there. 250, whatever it is over there. I thank God for that. But as I give my life to my physical needs, I need to give my life to God for my spiritual things and give Himself and give myself to Him as He gives Himself to me. He, for 33 and a half years, walked on this people planet. He walked on this planet and gave Himself for me because He loved me. I wish to God that you guys would understand, and not all of you, but some of you would figure out that God really does love you. You know how hard it is? You know how hard it would be for me to, to live for God with all my heart if I didn't think that God loved me like He loves everybody else? You have to understand that God loves you just as much as He loves Billy Graham. There's no separation there. The separation comes with how much of, of, of Billy Graham's life he's given to the Lord and how much I've given to the Lord. I love him and I gave myself to him, but what am I doing with the life that God gave me? The spiritual life. He gave me a spiritual life to give. It's my job to give it. Does that make any sense? He gave me a physical life, and I'm very blessed. I, I'm very healthy, and I have been. I've worked, you know, forever, and I don't hurt anything. Hurt, I'm good. I'm very blessed, and I know that. I, I see people all the time that are hurt, and, and they're just hurt. <laughs> it can't be. And, and, I, and I see, I, and I see people that are hurting physically. And I, and I know how blessed I am that I don't hurt physically. I know that. But what I want to get across to you is this. Is until you understand this, that I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. Quit condemning yourself about every stupid thing. How many in here are perfect? Wow. Come to the altar. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> none of us. None of us are perfect. How many are going to mess up something? Girl, how many have a belly button? Okay, if you have a belly button, that means you're a human. Okay, and you're going to mess up somewhere. Something's going to happen to you. Something, somewhere you're going to mess up, you're going to say the wrong thing, be in the wrong place, do the wrong... And God's not going to say, I knew they wouldn't make it. Knew we shouldn't have died for that one. No. He's going to say, could you just come here? Let me love on you a little bit. Wipe off your face. Get you down the road. I heard a story, and I'll close with this. Uh, thank you, Sister Hyde. Thank you. I love you. You're awesome. Um, I'll close with this. We, uh, I was listening to the radio, and the, the guy said that this little girl said she saw she saw the Lord. She talked to the Lord. And the priest said, Now, honey, you didn't see the Lord. She said, Yeah, he's real. I saw him. She, he said, Okay, how many times have you seen him? She said, Twice. So if you see him again, ask him what's the last thing I confessed, and I'll believe you. She said, Okay, I'll do it. She came back you know, several weeks later. The priest asked her, what did you ask him? Or did you see Jesus? And she said, yes, I did see Jesus. He said, well, what did, what did I confess? And she said, he said he forgot. She said, he said he forgot. It's because that's what Jesus does. He doesn't hold it against you. I don't care if you're the biggest drug dealer in the face of the planet. 
I don't care if you were uh, the sorriest excuse of a human being ever. In the, listen, you couldn't have been any worse than Mary Magdalene. She had seven devils. I'll say, if you have one, you're messed up. If you got seven, you're really messed up. And so I'm just, you couldn't have been, you couldn't have been any worse than her. And, and Jesus just forgets when you, for, when you confess that he says, okay, let's go on. Let's go on. Aren't you tired of carrying that junk? Aren't you tired of not thinking that the Lord loves you as much as he loves everybody else? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But you have to make the right choices. God gives you choice. It's up to you. I can choose to be blessed. Or I can choose to be cursed. It's up to this white kid. It's up to me. It's up to me. I said I was going to quit, didn't I? Can I share one more story? No, no. Okay, listen. Preacher, pastor at Hamlet, sitting in church. Got out of church and went back to the motel. Preacher spun him around in his chair, said he needed knee, and looked him in the face. He said, you have to make a choice. So what do you mean, Pastor? You have to make a choice. You can either be rich on this earth, or you can be, uh, or you can give what God gives you away. It's neither one's right or wrong. But you have to make a choice. With the gift of calling that's put on your life, you can be rich in this life, or you can do what God's called you to do and, and still be just fine, but give most of it away. What are you going to do? Neither one's wrong. God's going to bless him either way. He said, I had to make a, make a decision. He said, every dime I get goes into ministry. From every book, every CD, everything that we ever made goes into ministry. He said, I'm not wrong to take that and put it in my pocket. It's, it's what God has got. He goes, I've got my name on it. I could sell it and I could be profitable. He said, but I chose to be in the ministry. And I had to make a choice. Neither one's wrong. Neither decision's wrong. And God has blessed him. And above and beyond what he ever thought that he'd be blessed. And he made a choice. He made a conscious choice. He could take every book deal, every, every CD he ever made, anything he's ever made, and put that money in his pocket, and God would be happy with that. And he, he got, there's not a problem with that. You earned it. God's not into taking your earnings and just taking them away from you. That's not, that's not the plan of God. God doesn't care what you do about that. He just cares if you're obedient to what he tells you to do. God tells you to give $1,000. You better give 1000 not give 900 God tells you to give $5, five you better give 5 and not 4 Can I get a witness? See, some of us need to get up over the $100 mark and give it and start giving thousands. See, $100, that's a lot of money. I'm not stupid. But $100 giving, that just opens the door to $1,000 giving. $2 giving opens the door to $100 giving. This man knows the testimony of me giving $2 a month and scrounging it up to give to Brother Walter Nutt and giving him an ashtray full of change to forget $2 because I didn't have $2. But that, those days are long gone and they're not going back because I choose. I choose to be obedient to the Lord. I choose it. I don't have to. I can walk out of here and never come back. But I choose to. I choose to live for the Lord. I choose to live in Christ. I choose it. I choose not to fail. I choose to succeed. I choose it. I choose to have a God who loves me and gives himself for me and accepting that for who I am. I know I'm not Mr. Perfect and I know I'm not Mr. Wonderful, but I know that he loved me and gave himself for me. And I choose to serve him. Amen. Now I'm done. Stand up. <laughs> I'm not done. I'm going to quit. Stand up for me, please. I don't want to lie to you. Too bad. I love you guys. And I want you to start living. Get involved in life. Live. 
Someone says live. Yeah. Live. Yeah. Get involved in the life of Christ. Yeah. Know he died for you. Know he loves you. Know he gave himself for you. If you, if you ever get that in your spirit, there ain't nobody can stop you. That's right. Nobody. If you ever get it in your spirit that God loves me, he gave himself for me, I'm on the way to heaven, I'm a son of God, not the son, but a son, man, there ain't nobody stopping you. Amen. You might have trouble come against you, but that's all right. Because God's got me. God's got me. I can preach another hour, I ain't going to. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. You are so wonderful to me. Thank you for every person that has darkened this door today. God, I pray blessing upon their home. Hundredfold blessing upon their home, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for those that don't think that you love them as much as somebody else, that that lie of the devil get out of their spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, pour your love into them. Let them know that you love them like, you, like, like, like no one has ever loved them, Father. And Father, I give you praise for it. God, we pray blessing over every individual in their home tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus. Blessings upon this house. Thank you for our workers. Thank you for those that helped make this thing happen. And Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody 